I've been working with a lot of amazing people um, for the last year, but in the last week, I've had a lot of amazing people. And one theme that has, re has come up over and over and over again is the idea of prioritizing yourself internally. Now we make moves and that tells the universe what our priorities are. And what we don't understand is even if we know what's really the most important thing, how we move is what the universe responds to. So for instance, if you really, really want a healthy body, but you are eating bad food, the universe responds to what you're doing, not what you say. And one of the things that I've noticed is a lot of people prioritize security, money, and then freedom. And they think that they're prioritizing freedom, but they're actually usually saying, well, I'd like to prioritize freedom. So my goal is to get as much money as possible in the bank. And I said, well, then you're actually prioritizing security. And then they, and they would say, no, I'm actually prioritizing freedom. And I was like, well, if, you're, if you can't be free until you have a certain amount of money, you're actually declaring to the world, to life, to yourself, that your number one goal is security, right? Not freedom. And you're saying, I will have the thing that I want after the number one thing. Now, what if you were to move in a way where truly freedom was your number one goal? And what if the biggest asset you actually have is something that you've never been looking at? Like instead of just deciding that your number one asset is money, security, because that's what we think about most of the time. What if the number one asset, I just want to play with this, play with this with me. What if the number one asset you have is your awareness? And I know that's a cliche thing. But play with the idea, what if you moved as if your awareness was first? What if you moved as if awareness was first and even no matter what happens financially, even no matter what happens with your security, even if what, no matter what happens with the government, even with no what happens with what people say about you, you're not, how you move, right? So there's a lot of us out there that go, I know that awareness is my number one thing, but then we check what's going on online all day. I know that the number one thing that I have is my soul, but I just say I know that and spend eight hours a day at a job that I hate. I know that my number one asset is, is freedom, yet I keep enslaving myself to what's going on with Facebook. And so we say that these things are our priority, but really our priority usually in the way we move, even not the way we declare, we might declare that these things are our number one priority, but what matters is how you move. Because this week I had so many clients who basically said their number one goal is awareness or freedom, but I would always hear this caveat, once I have enough money, then I can be free. And I'm like, well, then your number one goal is money. And the more I do this work, the more I learned, if you make money bigger than your soul, you lose both. If you make your relationship bigger than your soul, you lose both. If you make something outside of you bigger than you, you actually are saying this thing is bigger than me. So what the universe does, it goes, I have to knock this over so you can see that you're safe without this. For instance, if you're worried about money, then life is going to take it from you to show you that you're still alive even if you lose it. Take in this idea. If you say the number one goal I have is to be in a relationship, then life could very well be like, okay, put them either in a really mediocre relationship or take them out of the relationship they're in or make the person leave them because the number one goal should be your soul, your connection to yourself. Now, Today I know was a huge election day and I'm not going to get into the specifics of politics at all, but no matter what happened today, either people got totally what they wanted and congratulations or people did not get what they want. And I'm sorry, in any event, we can now put down the external world as not our prayer. We could go, I'm going to put this down because I don't have any control of what they do, but I have control of my vibration. Do you get what I'm saying? Like if you are not happy with today's results, you have a great opportunity to go, I have finally been given the opportunity to stop checking on what this president or this candidate said or what this, like the gossip. I finally have no choice but to just release this and go, what do I want in 2021? What do I want 
from me? What do I want to learn from myself? Because here's what you don't know. Here's what most people don't know. And you won't believe me and you'll probably fight me on this for a minute. But the problem that we have is the belief that the outside matters. The belief that the outside matters. The belief. And I know there's people trigger going, you don't understand what they're planning to do. Or you're really excited about how could there be half the country excited and half the country depressed about what's going on? Don't you think everyone's getting different information? How, I mean, do you think half of one side is just really dumb? Or do you think that maybe totally different information is getting in? And why I say that is because the main problem that we all have and we all struggle with is the idea that the outside matters. And that's what's killing us, not the outside, our belief that it matters. Imagine if you were given since you were born a belief that if your neighbor wears a red shirt, you're going to go broke. Imagine if you just believe that. If someone taught you, your parents taught you that, there's like school that teaches that. Just so you know, when, you're, when your neighbor wears a red shirt, you're going to go broke. Now that's craziness, right? That's a ridiculous belief. That's just arbitrary and insane. But what if then your number one goal, what would it be? To keep the neighbor in a different color shirt you'd be staring at the neighbor. Your life would be like, okay, and now you're in this thing where this circumstance affects you. Now, here's what most people don't understand. The circumstances of now are just as arbitrary and just as irrelevant as your neighbor wearing that shirt. Whatever the taxes are about to be, whatever they're going to do, whatever positive thing is coming in, even all the great things you're excited about in the world don't affect you. Do you, can you play with that? You're, the only problem is you believe they affect you. How would you move if you knew they didn't affect you? If your mind is going, you know, what's going on in any part of the world? I'm so annoyed by the censorship. I'm so annoyed by how unseen I am. I'm so annoyed by no restaurants open. I'm so annoyed by how I can't even, you know, whatever it is, I'm so annoyed your problem is not those things. It's that you believe they matter. And your belief that they matter is a declaration that they have power over you, which is a declaration you're not going to access your power. You're literally saying, why find out what I am? Because I'm so affected by what the economy is doing. I'm so, I'm so affected by this and that, that, that. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not, I hope you can hear this and not hear a lack of empathy for people whose restaurants are being shut down, for people who have COVID, for people, whatever it is. I'm holding space for that. I'm just not going to sit here and discount the power of what you are. What, what if, instead of going, the circumstances run me, like, do I own my restaurant anymore? Do I have my thing? Do I have this or that? Just sit with, what am I supposed to become this year? What am I supposed to become? Give no power to the circumstances. What do I want for this year, right? What am I? And this is why we're talking about rearranging your internal priorities because how you've moved has been your priorities, not what you declared last year, right? Amelia says, how about mandatory vaccines taking over your conscious mind? There's no part of me that is, first of all, I'm not going to get into any side on that specifically because I don't want to, but I will get into nothing is bigger than you. And if you spend the year working on the highest version of you, will it even happen? And if it does, is it possible there's a frequency where it doesn't affect you? And is it possible your constant belief that it's hurting you is worse than it itself? I don't know, but I'm just saying, what are you? What are you? That's not a denial of what it is. It's not a pro of what it is. But the first given is that you have to be your body for your body to be affected. Do you get what I'm saying by that? You're beyond your body. And as we learn oneness, you will discover that you have feelings that are out here, that you can see things when your eyes are closed, that you can have sense, you can sense things, that you have an intuition, that you have thoughts that are actually outside of your body. And what if the 2021 revelation is there's a place that I'm supposed to access that no one can take from me? There's a place that I'm supposed to access 
that no one can take from me. Can you, can you see what I'm saying? Can you say that out loud? The only power is in, you have a thing that already was temporary anyway, that you're saying that is something they could take from me. What can they take from you? They can take your money. Well, when you die, you won't have it anyway, right? But you are the source of your money, so you can make it more. They're going to knock the economy down. Well, what would you become? And everything will be really cheap. And what's the new currency? And what would you become? You got to learn how to become the highest version of yourself. As T.L. Swan would say, you got to become resilient. You got to become massively, massively resilient right now, right? Like Bab says, the idea of no relationship is a real problem for me. No, it's not. You believe it is. It's time for you to learn to have a relationship with yourself. Don't just sit there and go, I'm not enough until the right relationship is here. That is such a lie that you use to abuse yourself. The idea that someone outside of you is necessary for your existence is insanity. But the more you get that, the more you move to that, the more you let your body align with that, the greater the person will be that shows up because you're not codependent on them, right? You're not saying they're the answer to everything. Now, what, when, what happens when you do that with money? What happens when I'm bigger than money? Of course you are. We're not paying dead people. You create stuff and money came. Do you create from your highest? You know, do you ask yourself, what's the highest version of me? And here's what you have to know. Your body catches up to your intuition at the speed of nature. When you cut your arm, no matter how quickly you want it healed, it takes whatever time it takes. You get what I mean by that? Your body has to heal in its own way. Same way, when you create an intention to connect and meditate every day, when you, when, you, when you take the time to say, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to get rid of this old pattern, I'm going to get over that old story, I'm going to release that old thing, I'm going to say yes to the higher version of me, I'm going to purge that old story that I'm not enough, your body has to take the same amount of time to catch up. When you work out, you could work out for 10 days, be totally excited about fitness, but it takes more than that for your body to catch up. So what we mostly do is we meditate for like five days and the body starts catching up. And as it catches up, it starts to purge your story, which is really painful because you're still addicted to thinking you're your story. So then you go, forget it, it's not working. It totally was working. It was hell for you because it was purging you. So you should be feeling like you're dying when you're meditating sometimes. It should be feeling like agony. It should feel like hell because you're purging what you thought you were. You're purging your story of, I connect to my parents this way. You're purging your story of, I'm not enough. You're purging your story of, I have, you know, I have all these addictions. And when you purge like alcohol, if you were an alcoholic, days three, four, five are hell. Wait till you purge your entire false identity. Right, right. So like when you do this work, most people meditate, they get like a weekend, it starts creating results and purging what you're not. And you have this great opportunity to let the purge slowly come up and get connected to yourself right here and be present for it. But most people go, oh, it's not working. And we stop, which is like going to the gym for five days and stop. Your body needs time to catch up. <laughs>